In this video, we're going to be talking about the uh, impossible turn, or perhaps even the possible turn, depending on where we end up. And nope, that's going to be a crash. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Final Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're talking about the impossible turn. And if you don't know what the impossible turn is, it's what we use to describe taking off, having an engine failure on the upwind, and attempting to return to the airport from which you departed when you have less than a thousand feet above ground level. It's called the impossible turn because so many people have died trying to do that, that it is best to think of it as impossible, right? You are much better off focusing your attention on pitching forward, keeping the wing flying, making shallow turns, and sort of taking the controlled crash into whatever's in front of you. Even experienced pilots, highly experienced pilots, have stalled and spun the aircraft uh, in an attempt to return when they have an engine failure on the upwind. 99.9% .9 of the time, that's how it ends up. And so therefore, it's considered the impossible turn. So why does this happen, and even to experienced pilots? There's kind of three things to think about. Uh, one is the startle effect, right? The disbelief that this is actually even happening. And while you kind of comprehend what's going on, there is some delay in your reaction time. The second thing is a failure to keep the wing flying, right? You actually have to pitch forward enough to push the nose toward the ground. You have to keep air flowing over the wing and pointing toward the ground in this situation is counterintuitive. The last thing is pre-flight planning a failure to understand what your options really are or to know where the wind is coming from. So how can you deal with those three things? Uh, for the startle effect, you can consider the way my flight instructor taught me to brief the departure, right? Consider that the next minute and a half of your life might be the most exciting you've ever had. You have to think, this is about to happen to me. If we have an engine failure or fire after rotation with no runway remaining, we will pitch forward, push everything all the way in, turn the fuel pump on, and if there's no response, we will land wingtip to wingtip. We will pull the power out, the mixture out, shut the fuel off, turn the mags off, pop the doors open, and after we use the flaps, we will turn the master switch off. The second thing is you have to pitch forward enough in your seat to feel light, almost like zero Gs. You have to practice pitching forward enough to feel light, get the nose pointed toward the ground, and keep the air flowing over your wing. And in today's world, you can use ForeFlight's aerial view as part of your departure planning to get a feel for what your options are. Do you have any options going forward? Is it a right turn? Is it a left turn? Um, if you haven't done that, when you arrive at a new airport, take that opportunity at altitude to do kind of you know, some reconnaissance. Look down and see, if I depart off this runway, what are my options? If I depart off that runway, what are my options? That's a great chance to see like what's going on. And also know where the wind is coming from. Uh, the most survivable situation is gonna be keeping the wing flying and pointing into the wind. So uh, if you have to turn into the wind and it's a left turn, you should know that. If it's gonna be a right turn, you should know that and think about what those options are. Uh, if you are briefing ahead like this is about to happen, you are ready to push forward and you know all those options, it's gonna be more survivable than if you hadn't done those three things. This is something that you can and should practice with your CFI. Uh, your CFI should be regularly pulling the power on upwind just to train that fundamental response into you, that if that's what happens, you pitch forward. If that's what happens, you pitch forward. I require my students to keep their hand on the power from the ground up to 1,000 feet AGL, and initially, they'll forget to do that. And my deal with them is, if you take your hand off the throttle, I'm going to pull it to idle. So that's great practice. That only happens a few times, because <laughs> after you do that a couple times, they don't take their hand off of it. But it also helps condition in that response that if that happens, they pitch forward. If that happens, they pitch forward. That has to be a fundamental response that's trained into you. That's not something you can think about. It's something you just have to do. Okay, so we've established that this should be your fundamental default response. You are going to pitch forward, land straight ahead, make shallow turns, keep the wing flying, point into the wind, and take what you get. But what if there's absolutely nothing in front of you? 
I mean, truly, there's office buildings in front of you, or worse, let's say there's a school with kids on the playground and, and you'd rather take the hit. You don't wanna take out anybody else and you realize there's nowhere to go in front of you. Well, this happened recently to a CFI and a student in Georgia. And the CFI did the impossible turn, turned the airplane around, kept the wing flying, and crash landed the airplane back on airport property. The CFI in this case was the only person seriously injured. The student walked away and nobody was hurt on the ground. That's a really successful outcome. And I feel horrible that the CFI was seriously injured in this, but let's face it, he was a martyr and did everything absolutely right, saved people on the ground and saved his student. So are there ever exceptions? Perhaps there are. When you do that pre-flight planning and you decide that there truly is nowhere to go, or you're over the airport looking down thinking, man, if I had an engine failure on takeoff, there would truly be nowhere to go except that school, you might wanna think about what would happen if I did have to turn around. And that's also something you can practice with your CFI. You should start it at altitude, just assume like 2,000 feet is the ground, go into like a VY climb, climb up to 500 or 1,000, power to idle. Make sure you count three to five seconds to account for that startle effect and practice releasing the, the yoke, pushing forward enough to feel light in your seat, rolling into a steep bank. And remember, in a steep bank, as long as you're releasing the yoke and not pulling, your stall speed increase is gonna be negligible. So roll into that steep bank, release the yoke, and see if you can bring the airplane back around before you cross the 2000 mark again. Once you've done it at altitude, find a remote airport with very little traffic and no obstacles so that you can practice this close to the ground. Feeling the ground rushing up at you like that and getting ground shy is part of the problem here. So if you experience this a couple times with your CFI, you might just be more prepared in the event you find yourself in a situation like we saw in Georgia. 650 feet, there's your engine failure. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. React, we pitch forward. We roll the airplane into a steep bank turn. Keeping our wing flying. Okay, and that worked out for us at 500 feet. One 1,000, two 1,000, three, light in your seat, steep bank. And nope, that's going to be a crash. Okay. So, what do we learn here? We learned we're definitely not returning below 500 feet. And even at 500 feet, everything was working for me. I was totally prepared for it. And that's why they call this the impossible turn. Because here I am practicing fully prepared for what's about to happen. I know exactly how I'm going to react. Sure, I'm counting to three, but let's be honest. That's not a totally accurate simulation of the startle effect. Uh, in both of those last attempts, definitely we would have crashed the airplane. So if you have to crash the airplane, one of the most important parts is you keep the wing flying and you fly it into the ground through the crash. It's the stalls and the spins that are for sure going to end up fatal, and you have a possibility of walking away if you keep the wing flying, fly it through the crash. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. I know you got comments, so bring it on. Leave me a comment below what you think about the impossible turn or the possible turn, what you think about the CFI in this video. Did he do a good job? And let me know if there's a video you would like to see. Also, a huge thanks to the patrons. Remember, I show up every Friday for FaceTime with office hours. You get uh, four sessions every month, tons of bonus content there. That's a great way to support the channel. Also, a huge thanks to Fourflight. They are the essential app for aviation. You can find them at fourflight.com. And remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Uh, if something happens to you out there in the wild, you are going to want to know that you have a team of experts in your corner. You can find that at AOPA.org. Renew your membership and select Pilot Protection Services. These videos are also brought to you by Bose. They have the new A30 headset, which I plan on getting shortly. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. The Bose A30 could possibly be the new standard for aviation headsets. I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. And until I see you again, be safe, fly your best.